we've got a massive squad. I think at the weekend there's always three different starting 11s. We saw some players again involved tonight that have been linked away. Christoph Scholles was one who started in school tonight. He's been linked away a lot. It's a big squad. We're going to have to get rid of some, I imagine, over the next few weeks. But is he part of your plans? Yeah, I mean, they've all got the opportunity to be part of the plans. Um, there will be some incomings and some outgoings. Um, you can't carry that bigger squad into the championship season. We all know that. So everybody's got the, uh, the opportunity now to you know, uh, show what they want and show show that they want to be here and, and fight to get promoted this season. So you know, the ball's in the players' courts in that sense. They know that. We've spoken about that. Um, but we've also had a, a large number simply because we've had so many internationals away who've had to join up later. Um, and it gave the younger, a few of the younger lads the opportunity to play with us. Some of them have now gone out on loan. Saxon to Stevenage, for instance, Flynn, uh, Barley to, to Plymouth. So, you know, they'll continue their development by playing games, which is what we can't guarantee at the moment for them. So um, that'll be good for them. But yeah, the, the squad will be trimmed as we go. Well, it's nice to have all these options. It's difficult sometimes, like tonight, I think there was quite a few that were left out. I don't know, Angus Gunn, Sam Byron, what was the situation there? No, so uh, Gunny was just precautionary. Um, he just jarred his knee slightly in training yesterday. Sam Byron was also precautionary. Um, uh, Isaac Hayden went to see a specialist yesterday um, because his knee had been swelling, which I, I mentioned last week. And they flushed it out, so I don't expect to see him uh, until the early start of the season. Um, but. Uh, the consult was really happy with with what he what he did, and um, you know uh, that would be good news for us because you know we had a week's really good training, and then for, for some reason got some swelling on the knee, so he's had that flushed out. I'm still yet to see Isaac Hayden that needed in the pre-season. How long do you give them before they maybe make an appearance? No, I've just explained oh, about sorry. Isaac. Sorry, <laughs> um, but no, Adam will probably play 45 minutes against MK Dons for the 23s on Friday. Um, he's been training with us now the last three or four days, uh, but we don't really want him to be travelling and then playing at Marseille. So um, he'll get 45 minutes on Friday as well, a few of us. And you've had a week of the players training, well, a couple of weeks now, but of all the internationals being back and everything. How far away are you from knowing what your, what your first 11 against Cardiff will be? Yeah, way off at the moment because, as I say, uh, the internationals only properly started training uh, Wednesday and Thursday last week. Um, you know, it's been a, a real long season. Last season was a real long season for them with the, the internationals um, running through to June. So we've had a short break, but now we've got them back. Um, you know, and the squad start, starting to take shape now. We play things in tonight, the National League North. Well, it's Marseille on Saturday, who are probably going to be playing in the Champions League. It's going to be quite a big step up for them in, in intensity and level. Yeah, but, but that's what we wanted. We, as I said, we, we wanted to stress the players for the first few games because uh, we knew they'd be working hard in training, and um, you know they, they won't be working as hard the next few days now going into the games against Marseille, Cambridge, and then the double header against Celtic and Hibs. So um, you know it was the plan that we wanted: overload them at the first part of it, and then you know, get them ready for the games. We saw some of the uh, social media videos with team team bonding, with the the white water rafting and stuff going on. How is the mood in the squad? And obviously, it's a big one. It's quite hard to keep everyone happy, but is, yeah. is it working? Ah, pre is the easiest time to keep people happy because I can pick anybody in the teams, and nobody feels like they've been left out. Um, but no, the, the week away was brilliant. I mean, my assistant Craig Shakespeare has been to a lot of pre-season camps, and he felt that's the best one he, he's had in terms of the facilities, the the camaraderie, the togetherness of the group, the, the, the standard of pitches that we played on and the work we got out of the players as well. So um, we're really pleased with how it's going so far, um, you know, and uh, we're looking forward to, to get everything right for that first game at, at Cardiff. And it's difficult after relegation to keep that mood high, but I guess when you've got so many players who've been there and, and done it before in this squad, then does that help that other players might be struggling a bit more? Yeah, no, we put the last season to bed a, a long time ago. Um, your summer holidays were, were putting that to bed, and this is a new season. And um, you know, uh, we've got new challenges ahead of us, but ones we're looking forward to. Thanks very much. Cheers, thank you. Did you uh, fancy a break from the dugout tonight, Dean? I think you were sitting uh, up the rows back with, with Mr. Weaver, I think. Yeah, no, I just felt like you know, I'm, I'm not one for coaching during pre season games. We've done a lot of work on the training ground. So I thought it'd be better to get a, a better view from upstairs, and um, you know I enjoyed having that view from up there. You know, normal league game, I like to be on the side because I, I feel the, the the players need to see me and uh, need to know uh, what my thinking is as well. For those watching, 
game like tonight, is, is there anything to be read into take to formations and what you're trying to do tactically? No, I mean, as I've said to be, as I've said before, um, shape systems, you know, they can be what they want. Um, the style of play is, is going to be the important thing for us. How we want to play, uh, with and without the ball, they're the two two big things for us. Um, we want to be quick on transitions. We want to be, we want to win the ball back as quick as we can. Um, you know, we don't want to be throwing aimless balls into the penalty box. Uh, you know, so. That's the sort of style that we're looking for, um, but you can do that with a multiple of systems. Uh, Kieran Dow wasn't here tonight either. It's, that yeah, no, he's uh, had an operation on a, a, a hernia, but we expect him to be probably back for the Hibs game. Okay. Um, so it's just a short turnaround with him. And I guess so with Isaac, when you say it's flushed out, is that basically a minor up? Yeah, it's just a minor up, just to get it flushed out, yeah. Cool, brilliant. Um, and finally for me, uh, lots of links. Um, Norwich and Gabriel's uh, Sara and Sao Paulo. Uh, anything in that? Is that close? There's, uh, there's always going to be links and speculation linking with, with a lot of players, and we're looking for good players. Um, you know, and we'll continue to do so. He's a good player. But yeah, he's a good player. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a lot of good players out there. Yes, he rolled his ankle. Yes, or rocked his ankle yesterday. Two days in there. We've actually. We heard him over there talking a bit longer than you want him to talk about Andrew Ammer, Bummer Daly on the pitch. Uh, great to see him out for five minutes. Yeah, really good. And as I said, we've had to, we wanted to nurse him back because it was a stress injury. We don't want to throw him on too hard grounds too quickly. Um, and we thought tonight was a good chance to give him 45 minutes and he's come through that unscathed. Um, you know, and I expect really big things of him to come. Um, he's a talented player, he's, he's athletic, he's good in the air. Um, you know, all the attributes uh, that can be a real top centre half for us. Yeah, I'm going to ask you that. I mean, you know, you, you play in that position yourself, you work with a lot of decent centre half, I'm sure, in your coaching career. He's got the raw material, hasn't he? He just needs to keep his head down, keep working. Is there? Yeah, no, his experiences will come with playing football games. Um, you know, he's been unfortunate with the injury last season that's, um, you know, robbed him of a lot of games. Um, you know, but he's come through it a stronger person mentally, I think, as well. And he's, his outlook now is to become one of the leaders of the group. Ask you about another younger player. Obviously, you've let Flint go out, uh, one or two others. But Liam Gibbs, you look maybe one who's a bit closer to your first team for that, so. Yeah, Gibbs has done well. Um, you know, we'll, obviously, three players went out from that area: two Lonies, Billy and, and Matthias, and, and Ruppy went as well. So we've been looking to bring people in in that in that area, and um, but also give the opportunity to players here as well. And, and Liam's one of them. And uh, yeah, I thought he done well today. I thought he looked forward really quickly, which was. What we've been looking for, um, you know, and you can take too many touches in our our own half, which has probably probably been one of our faults in this um, in the first few games of pre-season. Final one, Marseille. Safe to say that we step up in terms of the quality to what you need to see from your boys in that game. Well, we need them to step up now as well, and you know, I'm sure we will. Um, you know, as I said, the togetherness within the group and the, the understanding of what we're after has been really good. The training sessions have been good. Um, you know, and I expect them to step up now for the Marseille game. Yeah. Cheers, guys.